Okay, last time we were talking a little bit about our test setup here and for that we use for QCing headphones and for measuring headphones and for R&D and all those good things. Today, I want to talk about distortion. Distortion is something that everyone seems to key in on on forums and, you know, the the objectivists are just crazy about distortion. Distortion is like something that is taboo, like you can't have it. And I'm here to tell you that everything distorts and everything has distortion and your music has distortion built into it and distortion is in your playback chain. Everywhere there's distortion. What everyone tries to do for the most part, in at least in the playback side, is minimize it. You know, you're not going to eliminate it. It's not something that goes to zero. It doesn't happen. So let's talk a little bit about the measurement of it though and just you know show everybody what we're, what we're dealing with here in terms of distortion. In the last video, we talked about frequency response. And I was showing how moving the same headphone around on the test head can give you dramatically different results on the frequency response. The same thing go, is held true for distortion. If you don't properly set the unit under test, or properly connect it, or whatever you're testing, if you don't have it done properly, you're not going to get accurate results. Showing something in a negative light that wasn't designed to be that way is wrong. Whether you're a reviewer or a manufacturer or whoever you are using sophisticated quick gear like this, you should always strive to do the best you can to show the product in its best light because that's truly what it's capable of. You know, in designing we're the same way. We're like, well, we've got a transducer and we put it in a chassis or, you know, a case or a shell or whatever you're going to mount this speaker in. And then we start to learn how that affects the transducer itself. Then we add or subtract or take things away or change the porting or the whole size or the backside or interior dimensions. And you could see how you start with this transducer and what it's capable of and then what, how that changes when you make changes to how it's surrounded and what it's put into and ultimately how it's introduced to the general public. So there's a lot of R&D that goes on with this gear before it even becomes a final product and we go through subjective testing and you know listen to it and fine tune it that way. So there's a lot that goes on at the beginning and one of the things we're we key in on is distortion. Obviously, we're trying to minimize that, and um, it's one of those things that you tend to trade off along with everything else. You know, we could drop distortion really low by adding a ton of absorptive materials in the headphone, but now you also drop the sound of it. It doesn't sound as spacious or as open. So, you know, there, there's tricks that you can go back and forth on, and like everything in designing, you're trading off one thing for another. So, what you're trying to do is minimize everything or maximize everything depending on how you look at it. So what you'll see on the screen here now is we've got a typical distortion measurement of a Diana TC. I don't think it's out there anywhere. I don't think it was measured distortion on Diana TC, but we've measured it in this isolation booth with this test head, with the door closed. So we've got the a minimal amount of noise in here. And you can see that even below at 20, the Diana TC's um, distortion is around, looks like it starts at 0.06% at 20 Hertz. Um, it's averaging, if you will draw a line through it, it's averaging 0.02 or 0.03%. It's negligible. Really low distortion on Diana TC. The measurement does show a peak at 10 kilohertz or something around 0.2%, but that's probably a measured anomaly. If we looked at other things like group delay and stuff, we'd probably see that, yeah, there's something else going on at 10 kilohertz, so it's probably not even the driver because the driver is probably not going to spike like that. Bottom line is looking at overall at the distortion measurement for Diana TC, it's very low. And of course it presents itself like that when you listen to it. It's clear, um, it's got clarity to the source. It's somewhat particular of the amplifier and the electronics you're using with because now the headphone itself isn't doing the distortion, right? Everything else is probably doing more of it. So when you drop distortion to this level on the transducer, you tend to hear more of the other distortions in the system or even in the music. And trust me, recorded music has tons of distortions and a lot of times it's added on purpose to get a particular sound. What we wanted to show you is that distortion measurements will vary with ambient noise. We were discussing uh, before about the fact that this booth is designed to drop about 25 dB of noise, which is around 300 times lower noise in there than out here in the room environment. It's not perfect and it doesn't do it completely at every frequency, but you just need to know the limitations of your isolation booth 
and you can use that for making measurements or at least comment on it. In our case here, we know that when we close this door, 24 dB is the actual average noise level in there with the door closed in this room. We're fortunate to be located, our facility is located in a fairly, um, it's a residential area, so to speak. It's quieter here, it's not a lot of noise. I think our average room noise is around 50 dB or so, it's pretty quiet. So it, within this booth, we're sitting around 24 dB, which is really low, I'm talking absolute level of uh, noise level. What that allows us to do is accurately make measurements in there over and over and over again without worrying about if somebody dropped a, a book in the next room or if somebody opened a door somewhere or if UPS rang the bell because none of that's getting into the measurements in here. If I took this measurement head and I simply had it on a desk here, all right, willy-nilly style, and then put the headphone on it, my distortion measurements and my frequency response measurements are now subjected to whatever's going on in the building. There's no isolation, zero isolation. So it's difficult to say, you know, unless you make a ton of measurements and they all come out the same. Of course, you can make a ton of measurements and they all come out the same with the same distortions in it too. <laughs> but there's no good way to accurately measure distortions at this low level, like Diana TC, without having an isolation room, chamber, something to eliminate the sounds in the environment. There's no way to do it, especially with open back headphones. We're doing some R&D on, on something, and so we're attempting to see how the change on the headphone affects the sub below one kilohertz range. So the headphone's not be moved on the head, it stays the same, and we can just implement the changes from here. It's a physical change on the, on the chassis. Bottom line is that we're making changes to the headset, measuring it, making a change, measuring it, making a change, measuring it, without moving anything. So the, the placement's always the same. And every time we measure, we close the door so we're not getting ambient. We'll have a, um, a close-up of this uh, on the screen, but you can see that uh, above a killer or so, which we're really not doing anything to, you can see how these 15 measurements are nearly identical in nature. There's no variation above here, which means every one of them, every measurement is the same because of the lack of noise or the lack of ambient noise adding bumps or whatever in our measurement. So if this was, if we made these same measurements with the head sitting on a table, you would invariably have things going on in here, particularly in the range we're looking at in the base region where we don't want to have anything affected. You would have things going on there from somebody moving something or somebody walking by or who knows what, you know, a plane going overhead. The thing is, is the microphone's very sensitive. It's going to pick that up and it's gonna to add to your measurements. Now you've got a question, particularly when you're doing R&D, you got a question, well, is that measurement accurate? And did that change, was it that change I made to the headphone caused by the change to the headphone or something external? It's really important to have an isolation booth when we're working on this stuff so that we can see these various changes that go on here um, in below the sub one kilohertz range and yet, you know, not, and, and not have them affected by ambient noise. I know this was supposed to be about distortion, but that's the whole idea is that when you're measuring for distortion, you've got to make sure that the distortion isn't being caused by something other than the device under measure. When you look at the methodology that's involved with a lot of these measurements, I can almost guarantee you that uh, there's an external factor when you're looking at frequency response and distortion that wasn't isolated and wasn't even cared about. It was just the measurement was done, let's move on. As manufacturers, we don't have the pleasure to do that. We, we can't assume that it's okay. So we have to go through what you see back here to make sure that every measurement is as accurate as possible so we don't get sidetracked or you know, go off on a tangent somewhere and waste days or weeks or months and come full circle and find out you made a mistake. You know, accuracy is key with what we do. Just to show you an example too, we made a measurement with this test head of the room with no, no headphone on it, just the head in the room and the head in the isolation booth. This is the test head and ignore the, um, the vertical axis here. It, it's, it shows in dB, but it's not scaled to zero or anything like that. It's just the test head is set for a 90 dB reference point to measure headphones. Anyway, bottom line is don't worry about the scale. It's more about reference level. You see, this is the noise from 100 hertz to, what do we do, 100 hertz to 15 kilohertz. This is the noise level in this room here, which again is a pretty quiet room, going up from 100 hertz on up, and you could see how it varies. And if we kept clicking test, 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 uh, and made measurements, I'm sure some of this would be 
you'd have a bunch of variation here. Each one test would be a little different because the noise can vary depending on what's going on in the environment. The lower trace is a measurement of the head in the isolation booth. And you could see how much lower in level it is. In effect, it, it's about 25 dB down. So what we're looking at is a difference of about, again, like I said before, around 300 times or so on average, quieter in there than out here, which obviously is gonna reflect on the measurements. We can even pick on something in specific, like if we look specifically at three kilohertz. In this room, at the time the measurement was made, there was a peak at three kilohertz here, which shows negative 45 dB, all right, which is 45 dB down from 90. Bottom line is that the peak, that peak here, which happened to occur while the measurement was being made, was about 10 more dB all right, louder than in this booth. So we go from 25 dB louder out here to 35 dB louder out here. Remember, it, dB is a logarithmic scale. There's no way that you could say that, well, it's okay to make a measurement under those conditions, it's particularly for distortion. You'd have to be looking at ambient too and somehow filter that out. And the way you do that is you have to have an isolation booth or a quiet space to put it in. So these are the things that need to be keyed in on when you're making measurements. And if you don't, then your measurements are most likely going to be flawed. And that's kind of the point we wanted to make on this video is that care has to be taken. Thank you. Take care.